was a milestone night last night for Purdue women's basketball as the Boilermakers picked up their 500th program win at Mackey Arena. Uh, Purdue getting great effort from several players, including Mary Ashley Stevenson and Janae Terry, as they improved to 10 and 12 on the season. Now the Boilermakers will get ready to head down to Bloomington on Sunday to take on the 14th ranked Indiana Hoosiers for a 2 o'clock tip-off. Good evening, everybody, from walk-ons in the Purdue Memorial Union. It's the Katie Gerald Show. We'll be talking with the Boilermaker head coach in just a couple of minutes. Also, assistant coach Mark Stevens will be joining us later on tonight as we get ready for Purdue's matchup against Indiana on Sunday. We'll have the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union right after this on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. It has to get a pain touch every possession. We're settling for contested threes. Ellis tries a three. Got it. And a timeout taken by Shauna Green. Forced to be reckoned with in the paint. Abby Ellis. America was so smooth. That behind the back dribble gave her enough space. Hello. Behind the back jumper good. Guess who? Janae Terry. The Boilermakers. Janae Terry doing a little bit of everything. I mean, we're breaking ankles up in Mackey Arena. Janae Terry doing a little bit of everything in the... There's Harper. And eight points in the first half. All in the paint. Give her that wow. and one. For the Boilers, because she's scoring on the interior at will. Off the dribble, stays patient. Feels where the defense is. That patience. Oh, he's really packing in the paint right now. Or inside the three-point line. Layton carries a triple. She was 0 for 6 in the first half. She puts herself in positions to score right there. Kendall Boston. They did quick trigger off the bounce. The Illini need to get her open looks from three. Terry, open look. Layton pays it off. Thorn in the side of the Illini in the third quarter, making everything work with her patience, poise, and distance. Ellis a three. There is Stevenson with a left hand, counted in the foul. Does not stop working. Gets the rebound, regathers, balance, shoulder squared, and one. You have to finish with contact. Open three. Harper puts it in. Welcome back to the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at walk-ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Everyone needs a little playing time, so before a Purdue basketball game or any time throughout the week, stop by walk-ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. We have a happy head coach next to us tonight. Uh, Katie Gerald's and the Boilermakers knocking off the fighting Illini. Much of the, ha the uh, joy of the audience here with us. Uh, First of all, the, the atmosphere last night had to be relief, had to be some joy. It's been a while, but it was a hard-fought win last night. Yeah, it was. Um, you know, even on Monday night, late night, overtime game, had a decent crowd. Um, so appreciate all the support there. Two for 16 in the fourth quarter, yep. uh, but found a way to gut it out. Uh, you watch the game. I don't. I, maybe we had one turnover in the fourth quarter. Uh, took care of the ball, got great shots, just didn't happen to go our way. Uh, but found a way to stay with it. Timeouts were great. In the, you know, in the end of the game, the, the the you know our huddle was great. Chins up, a lot of believers in, in what we were doing, and uh, we were able to, to sneak out of there. By the way, you can follow along tonight on uh, Facebook, Instagram, and X on Purdue Athletics. Ira letting us know he's watching tonight from Swamico. Um, since he says since you like recruiting sisters, are there any more Stevensons oh, that man. we can get out of New York City? A brother, I don't, I don't, I, we can get him to shave his legs or, <laughs> no, I think, uh, no, I, I think this is the, the one we have and uh, uh, fun game for her um, last night and uh, it's going to be a, a fun three years for, for the Boilermaker faithful. Well, since we're talking about Mary Ashley, she had a busy day today starting about 7.15. She had surgery to fix her broken nose. I assume everything went just fine. Everything went just fine. Got a text early. Um, and a uh, little loopy, 
you know, uh, as as to be. <laughs> We've had uh, players over the years, Katie. You wouldn't be able to know the difference. <laughs> so that's uh, good. Touche, touche. Good to know that you could tell touché. that. Touche. Um, yeah, actually, she sent me a text about an hour ago, and I asked her if she was still loopy, but uh, it was just a sentimental text. And the the kid is great, you know. Um, you know, we talked to last Thursday, didn't know if she was going to play Friday morning, wake up to a, a great text message. Uh, thank God. Cause when she told me she wasn't sure she's going to play, she's going to have surgery on Monday. I, I really wanted to throw up all night, like thinking about not playing the game without her. Um, uh, but, um, boy, am I glad she, she toughed that out for our ball club. Um, that kid was going to do anything to, to make Purdue win. And she did it. And just for people who aren't familiar, she uh, broke her nose in the Ohio state game a little over a week ago, actually broken in two places. Mm -hmm. And my understanding was they had to fix it within a certain time or they have to go in later and re-break it, which is something you don't want to have to not, have happen. Not really want to do that. Um, it, you know, uh, Doc says she should be shooting free throws tomorrow. I don't know that we're going to make her do that, but uh, she should be at practice on Friday um, and all ready to go on Sunday. You know, the thing that we talked about last night on the broadcast, and y you can't teach this, she wanted the ball at the end of the basketball game, and it's, it's really refreshing and, and really exciting to see a freshman – and I think Rashonda Jones has been that way down the stretch, too, mm -hmm. with the kids that want the ball in their hands at the end of the game. Just confident. Uh, both of them are. You know, I, th I know Shonda stepped up and missed two free throws. Um, and she comes over, you know, hey, guys, my bad, my bad, my bad. Um, I think Janae and Madison looked at her. It's okay, we got you. You, you got to stop on the other end. Um, and M.A. comes in and knocks down two free throws. But just confident kids and, and believing in their craft and trusting their work. Um, glad they're on our team. You know, every game is special, I think, to every player in some way or another, but it had to be extra special for Janae Terry to play against her former team last night. Never came off the floor, played 45 minutes, nine points, nine rebounds, and a career-best 14 assists. She was really spectacular last yeah, incredible. night. Incredible, yeah, yeah. Um, 500 for her career here. Yes. Um, you know, get a rebound, make a free throw. She gets that triple-double that everybody always – haunts me for get you know taking her off the end of the taking her out of, off the court at the end of the game but uh no just a special floor game um they win zone you know I think that's a testament to what we were doing offensively against their man so they win zone um Roshanda just didn't quite look comfortable so um keeping JT out there and, and understanding you know what we were trying to do um the the back door from Madison in overtime to to put us up by one and then her extra pass to to Caitlin in the corner that pushed it to four um, just a, a special game by number 10. You know, I, if, if we play Illinois in the Big Ten tournament, uh, we got to make sure we, we keep doing our job because since she has transferred over, we have not lost to them. So we got to make sure we do our job and protect her. You mentioned zone, playing zone on the uh, against the zone. You went a lot of stuff last night. Man, yeah. I think we saw a little 2-3, maybe a little 3-2. I don't know, 1-2. What did you not play last <laughs> night defensively? Whatever, we, we're going to try to figure it out. Um, it was just a little hybrid 2-3, trying to match up to what they were doing, um, recognizing where their shooters were, trying to – Trying to make sure uh, Genesis Bryant didn't get a, didn't get any clean looks uh, from the perimeter, uh, making sure Cook played in a crowd. Uh, man down the stretch, we were able to go offense defense with with Shonda and Ma there in overtime. Um, just worked out for us. All right, we're talking with Katie Geralds. We're going to have more after this. It is the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Both teams get the shots they want. Just couldn't get them to fall. Jumper there from Abby Ellis is good. Yeah, the pace between these two teams will be something to watch. As that one goes inside for Caitlin Harper, the sixth year. Her competitiveness has always been there, and a competitor loves rebounding. And she sure does. 801 career rebounds now. Five left on that shot clock. Three on the way from Layden. No good. Put back up, though. Again, second chance points for Purdue. Rebounding the ball. And actually, the guards for Purdue do such a great job rebounding. Ellis for three. That is good. Abby Ellis. She moves up to the top of the key and gives her post player a spot. Well, she's a five time. Inside to Harper. That one goes. We just saw a moment to go. Five seconds left on the shot clock right here for Purdue. Got to get something off. And there goes Purdue, breaking up that run for Nebraska. Offensive player. So Nebraska's in the bonus as Kroll misses those two free throws. And there's working away in the paint, turns around. What a move, but blocked. Heads the other way for Purdue in the hands of Abby Ellis. 
Well, in the first two minutes there, it was all about the offensive rebounds. And Huskers out-rebounding Purdue big here to start this quarter. Huge three from Sophie Swanson. Talk about another freshman. Yeah, she'll defend Rashonda Jones, who is working hard to try and get her team back in this. A great look there from Reynolds. She gets yep, great play by Reynolds. She was able to split two defenders there and get the finish. Here's Joe. You're listening to the Katie Gerald Show on 95.3 Bob FM. Back at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, uh, Linda is back in Michigan after driving down again last night to watch the Boilermakers play. It was her birthday, so yeah. she got a happy birthday happy present. Birthday. Happy so birthday. happy birthday to Linda. I, Jason's watching for tonight from Dallas and listening in, so... Uh, hello to him. And wherever you're watching, again, let us know here tonight on Facebook. We talked after the game last night, and it seems like we've had a lot of games over the years that with this, and we've had different names for it. Now it's the fight like a Boilermaker game. And I remember one in particular where I think we were down 15 or 20 points to Iowa and came back and won. And I think those games are so fitting in this game because mm -hmm. you got people, and we've probably got people here tonight, family members who are battling cancer. Last night was – uh, to benefit the Purdue Institute for Cancer Research. And it, I think it was fitting for that game to come down the way it did and for you to have to gut out a win at the end. Yeah. Um, you know, we talked about it bef with our group before the game. It, it was more than just a basketball game. Obviously, we're, we're not wearing pink because it's our color, right? We're, we're wearing pink for a reason. And, and like you said, we all have somebody in our lives who has been impacted or affected or, or lost somebody from breast cancer. Um, and just playing, you know, making it – Thank you. Um, making it more about basketball and, and fighting. And, and our group did that. You, you're exactly right. We, we, we fought like Boilermakers last night. And uh, if we can bring that fight for the, the rest of February and the March, um, maybe we can turn this thing around. By the way, the jerseys that the Boilermakers wore last night, there is a silent auction going on. And you have about f uh, 38 minutes left to bid. The uh, silent auction ends at 8 o'clock. Uh, you can go to Purdue Sports website. They can uh, take you in there, and, and you can basically go out and bid. And I did see Mary Ashley. Right now, Mary Ashley is the clubhouse leader in terms of the bids. Be a good good jersey to grab um, her her first year and having 25 and nine. Uh, she told me she's going to get a double double, so I'm going to have to give her hell for that. <laughs> she was pretty close. <laughs> well, she may, she needed to miss one of those shots in close and get her own <laughs> rebound. Uh, Sheila, watching tonight from Remington, we appreciate that. And Bob here in Walk-Ons, always appreciate hey, a Bob. Bob from the back. <laughs> um, you did have a game before that on yeah. the road against Nebraska, 68-54 loss last Wednesday night. You've tried to change things up on the road. We're going to get another opportunity on Sunday. Um, <laughs> we're running out of schedules that I, we can try. I don't try. know what else we can try, right? <laughs> um, you know, I know the, the Nebraska didn't – it didn't translate to a win, but it was probably the most connected we had been on the road. Um, we got there a little bit earlier, had team dinner, were able to do some things. We we just didn't shoot it very well, but we competed. We, we flew around on the defensive end. A couple things we could have fixed, um, but, you know, it, it, the fourth quarter they, they kind of pounded us on the offensive glass. Um, but I know the score doesn't indicate how well we played. We just – if we make a couple more open shots, I know that's probably the story of the game most of the time, right? But but we, we played better. Um, it wasn't like Penn State or Michigan State. We played better. Um, so if something we can just build on, we gotta, we've got to have a perfect game um, on Sunday down there at the other place that, that we don't like to yeah. say that name. But um, we've got to be perfect down there. But uh, if we can just keep building on that um, – you give us give ourselves a chance. You know, and I can tell everybody that's uh, watching and listening in tonight, uh, th these kids care because I thought that was one of the quieter bus rides and quieter plane rides home from Lincoln on Wednesday night. They really want to get this thing turned around. Yeah, they're, I mean, they're, 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 I'm telling you, they're fighting. Um, they, and we talk about all the time, you know, losing is terrible, right? Like, we all want to win. But, like, we have really good kids. There's no, you know, we don't have any, like, bad kids or problem child, you know, like we just don't have that. They, they come to practice. They work really hard. They're locked in on what we're saying. They're putting in extra work. They still believe that we can win. Um, so it's, it's kind of made losing tolerable. Um, if, if that's a thing, um, just hasn't translated. But, uh, I think last night, just the, I mean, we go two for 16, like we said in the fourth quarter and, and you could tell we were getting it tight, like mm -hmm. the pressure of not winning. And, um, 
you know, so down the stretch is like, hey, let's just win five minutes. Like, that's, forget winning a basketball game. Let's yeah. just win five minutes, and uh, our group was able to do that. A lot of great plays, a lot of great things happened. The shot of the game was the three-pointer that Caitlin no Harper doubt. hit in overtime because no it took you from a one-point lead to a four-point lead. No doubt. Um, we actually had just put in that little quick hitter um, against a, a man set, but thought, thought it could work against their zone. Um, you know, if, if it didn't end up what, with Caitlin having a corner three, uh, we were going to have Mary Ashley one-on-one -on -one in the post. But, uh, you know, I think Madison and Abby had missed some open looks, and so we tried to put Caitlin in a position to, to get the corner three and uh, stepped up with confidence and knocked it down. All right, we're going to take a quick break. Back in two minutes on the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Here's Kendall Bostick dumping it down to Hobby. Two seconds and picked off by Purdue. Especially because Michigan defended such a high level. Inside, and there is Mary Ashley Stevenson with a broken nose and all. Stevenson, a deep two, rattles it home, and the freshman with an early four points for Purdue. Locking it down, then how about the freshman? With the Batwoman mask, making it look. Stevenson with five. Oh, how about that touch with the left hand? Of the Boilers making things happen. Mary Ashley Stevenson, so calm, so poised. And here comes Terry, who is flirting with triple-double like numbers in the first half. Six points. Five rebounds, seven assists. Very interesting to watch how quickly they've come together after graduating so much talent last season. Big feet inside oh. to Stevenson, and the freshman is in double figures with 12. Seven game skid, and they have had an epic performance by Janae Terry. 500 career. Ellis a three. There is Stevenson with a left hand counter to the foul. Does not stop working. Gets the rebound, regathers, balance, shoulder squared, and one. You have to finish with contact. In the Stevenson, already with a career high, and she gives Purdue back the lead. Here's Kendall Bostick dumping it down to Hobby. Welcome back to the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Purdue Global is Purdue's accredited and affordable online solution for working adults. Persistence pays off at Purdue Global. Starting next Monday, we're on Mondays for the rest of the season. We've got four more shows after this one. So this is our last non-Monday broadcast, and we'll be on at 710 and again Purdue will take on Indiana on Sunday afternoon. Brianne is uh, watching over in Muncie tonight. This says she'll see us in a couple of weeks. Robin Guyton checking in, says great job last night. And John in Pennsylvania checking in as well. Uh, while we're giving out congratulations, and we have to congratulate your former coach, Christy Curry, because she won her 500th career game. I texted her earlier today, and I said, you know, I remember number one because yeah. we were sitting there in Dayton and Katie Gerald, or Katie Douglas hit a shot uh, late in the game to win that one. That's awesome. Uh, I, I called Coach on the way here. Obviously hit her up on social after after the game, but uh, called her on my way here tonight uh, and congratulated her in, in good old Coach Curry fashion. She credited Kelly for, for most of everything um, and her just trying to keep the ship together. But uh, – Told her don't give me any of that coach talk. Uh, <laughs> you know, I, I, I wouldn't be where I am or who I am um, if I didn't choose to, to play for her here and uh, owe a lot to, to, to Coach Curry. And while we're giving out congratulations, a name from the past that I think a lot of Boilermaker fans will remember, Joni Comstock was the uh, senior women's administrator at Purdue for several years, including one Purdue won the national championship in 1999. She left here after a few years, went to become an athletic director at a couple of different places. She's worked for the NCAA since 2006. She just announced a couple of weeks ago she is retiring at the end of February. And yeah. I always remember Joni Comstock after Purdue had won the national championship game. And, of course, they cordoned off the court. And I'm, you know, sitting by myself trying to get the postgame show together. She made a special effort to come over and talk to me 
and thanked me for what I had done. This is in the middle of the celebration That's in the awesome. national championship. Those little things are things you never forget. No, you just never forget something like that. That's awesome. Uh, well, congratulations and happy retirement and uh, always a boiler. Uh, let's talk about something that came out, I think, last week, and that was the Big Ten scheduling going forward because uh, the men's uh, Big Ten schedule has been 20 games and it's going to stay at 20. The women's is go also going to stay at 18. I think there had been some talk about maybe moving that up to 20. Talk about your thoughts on that, staying at 18, and also now just 15 of the 18 teams in the conference will make the conference tournament. Yeah, um, well, let's start conference tournament. Um, if you're 16, 17, 18, get better. Um, you know, like get better, make the tournament. Uh, we, we probably we, we could possibly be falling into that boat, so we got to make sure we get better. Um, you know, in, in 18, I think that was the number that we all wanted, I wanted. Um, our, the way our schedule aligns in the start of our conference tournament, if we have 20 games, having to compact that, that's just too much compression on a, on a schedule. And you talk about student athlete experience and their health, making sure they're, they're only playing two games a week, uh, three at the most, maybe once, maybe twice um, in the second semester. So 18 just made sense. So we so we play everybody everybody wants and probably keep the, the Indiana rival and we, we play those guys twice. And I would assume also they're going to have to work things out. That hopefully you don't have to make more than one trip out to the West Coast. And yeah. when you do, you play multiple games out there. I would think so. Um, I would think that you'd have, you know, some kind of travel buddy. You, you go out there, you play two games, you know, one year and the next year you, you play the other two and vice versa. Um, you know, traveling out there, it, it is what it is. It's, we, we're all going to have to do it. I um, I'm, I'm glad we live where we live and we're not living on the West Coast right. having to fly here as much as those guys are going to have to fly here. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how the West Coast teams adapt. We talk about the travel of having to go out there once or maybe twice. Yeah. Basically, all of their games except for three opponents are going to be huge road trips. Yeah, I just, uh, I'm, you know, how I am with flying. And you talk about time, time zone change and student athlete experience and missing school. Um, TV rules the world. Yes, it does. TV and college football, I think, rule yeah, the world. Yep, well, sure does. All right, we're going to let uh, Katie uh, take a little bit of a break here. We're going to bring Mark Stevens, our assistant coach, up next. It is the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Cook thought about it, then had it picked off by Janae Terry. Terry takes it all the way. Still maintaining that balance from Stevenson. Then Janae Terry gets into the passing lane. Nice finish up top. And then how about boom, boom. Terry oh, sips it in to Caitlin Harper. Much prettier than this. Janae Terry getting fancy. That's a pass where only Harper can catch it. Leading Harper to the basket. That angle is elite. Stevenson with five. Oh, how about that touch with the left hand? Of the Boilers making things happen. Mary Ashley Stevenson, so calm, so poised. Parker is so smooth. That behind the back dribble gave her enough space. Hello. Behind the back jumper good. Guess who? Janae Terry. The Boilermakers. Janae Terry doing a little bit of everything. I mean, we're breaking ankles up in Mackey Arena. Janae Terry doing a little bit of everything in the... Very interesting to watch how quickly they've come together after graduating so much talent last season. Good feed inside oh. to Stevenson, and the freshman is in double figures with 12. Seven game skid, and they have had an epic performance by Janae Terry. 500 career... It's a two-minute scoring drought. It gives Purdue a one-point lead. Janae Terry draws one, two jerseys. Boom. Genesis Bryant gets caught ball watching. Doesn't see behind her. It's a backdoor cut. Cook thought about it. Then had it picked off by Janae. Lafayette Limo, family-owned, women-owned, serving Greater Lafayette for over 33 years. Shuttles to and from Indianapolis and O'Hare Airports 365 days a year. Make your reservations now at LafayetteLimo.com. Lafayette Limo, proud sponsor of Purdue Athletics. Uh, throughout the course of the season so far, we've heard from uh, 
Kelly Kamara. We've heard from Alex Guyton, but we have not heard from assistant coach Mark Stevens until right now. <laughs> so first of all, Mark, well, welcome to the show and welcome to West Lafayette. It's I know it's been a while, but a lot of people haven't uh, haven't had a chance to meet you yet. Uh, definitely. Thanks for having me. Uh, talk about your background, because uh, I think when when people see you, uh, people ask me, uh, was this guy a basketball player or a football player? And I say yes and yes. <laughs> uh, talk about your, your athletic uh, experience growing up. Yeah, I've been fortunate uh, enough to play football and basketball. I played football and basketball in college. Uh, played arena football for nine years. Um, had a chance to, to play on some, made some practice teams. Uh, I was on the Colts practice team for six weeks um, and, and was just able to just have a chance just to, to play sports all year round. Um, so um, even outside of athletics, you know, I've coached from sixth grade basketball all the way up to varsity high school basketball um, and now I'm on my uh, third stop. Originally from Louisville? Yes, sir. All right. And it, it Say it, say it how the locals say it. Louisville. Louisville. Yeah, All right. there you go. See, if you say Louisville, everybody knows you're not from there, right? <laughs> it's Louisville. Um, you played at Moorhead State. Yep. Uh, and you played both sports. And I my, my notes tell me that you averaged 7.8 yards per carry as a senior, which led the nation. I did. Yeah, and it, it, it was fun. Um, it was, you know, back when guys, I guess, running backs and wide receivers wasn't as big as I am. And now you've got – you know, six five and six six kids running around running four four forties. You know, I'm gonna date myself. My birthday's actually come up in a couple of days, but we won't tell you how old I am. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it, it was fun. You know, just having a chance to to play both sports. Did you have a pre preference of one over the other? Um, now, yeah, I would say basketball definitely. You know, you can't just go out and find eleven people to go outside and play football true, with. True. It's seventy two and sunny every day in the gym. So were like were those the only two sports, or were there others? I played some baseball in high school, but that was about it. Yeah. Um, so actually, it, it's rare now that uh, student athletes get the chance to do two sports in college, and, and you had the opportunity. How difficult or easy or fun was that? I think it was fun, um, and I think the reason why is because, you know, I joke with my kids all the time is that I got out of conditioning, you know. So, you know, going from playing football, going to basketball, I didn't have to ever do that preseason basketball condition because they always thought that I was in shape. For the most part, I was, but basketball conditioning and football conditioning are two totally different things. So I was just able to just to kind of jump right into the other and, you know, had two great coaches that, you know, Kyle Macy, who's an Indiana, you know, legend, um, was my basketball coach. So he always made sure he took care of me. You know, I think there's a lot of um, back and forth about whether student athletes should specialize in one sport from early on. And I've been around a lot of coaches that insist that the more sports that people can play, the better they are because they'd rather them be in competition year round than just training for one sport year round. What, what's your feeling on that? I think it's different nowadays. I do think, you know, as kids as these younger ages, because um, I'm going through that now with my middle kid, is just, you know, the more sports they play, um, just the more their, their fast twitch muscles are get, get a chance to fire. You know, when you sit and you prepare for one sport, you know, all year round, you know, just you get more wear and tear on those muscle groups. But now you go out and you play football, you know, three months, four months out of year. You go out and play basketball three, four months out of year. You go out and you play baseball three, four months out of year. You're using different fast twitch muscles. You're using different body muscles. You, you, you're using different just movements that just going to overall help your athletic ability. As your college career progressed, at what point you d did you decide, or maybe you decided before that even started, that coaching might be in your future someday? Um, I think it was when I was done um, with, with, with playing, and my body was like, hey, you might want to find something else to do. Um, I actually was in Indianapolis, and I actually started out on the boys' side. Um, and then, you know, it was, you know, I had a chance to actually coach um, some kids that went here to Purdue, and, you know, and I went back and got an emergency teacher's license, and then it's kind of been, kind of been my road ever since. Let me go back. One more question about your athletic playing. Um, indoor football is a different animal. How, what, what's the biggest change other than it's shorter and you've got boards that you can hit each other off of? What's the biggest change between playing regular football outside and arena football? I think the biggest thing is just everything's a block out. You know, if you think about just basketball and you think about football, it, it, it's, it's organized chaos on a 50, you know, a 50-yard field. You know, you've got the walls that you're constantly banging into, and, you know, it's, 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 it's a lot faster, you know, because every pass is a touchdown or every run is a touchdown, you know. So I think the, the excitement about the game is just so much more. You know, the one thing uh, you look at, and, and I, I, I'm going to really use the lingo that I shouldn't use, the kids would, I think, describe you as chill. You're a chill guy. That doesn't really ring a guy that played football and played professional football. Uh, was, was, did you have to flip the switch when you went on the, on the field? 
No, I think that's the biggest thing. You, you, what you see is what you get. And I think that's why I love working with KG is that, you know, it's you, no matter what, you know, you always want to be steady. You never want your highs to be too high. You never want your lows to be too low. Um, so I think that's, you know, just the way I prepared, the way I played. And, and hopefully, the, you know, every now and then you've got to get, you know, your tone raises. But, you know, and I, th I think kids respond, you know, to, to whatever you are genuinely. By the way, I'm going to get roasted when I get home for saying being chill. So that, 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 that's coming, I know. All right, we're talking with Mark Stevens. We'll have more after this. It's the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Has to get a paint touch every possession. They're settling for contested threes. Ellis tries a three. Got it. And a timeout taken by Shauna Green. Forced to be reckoned with in the paint. Abby Ellis. America was so smooth. That behind the back dribble gave her enough space. Hello. Behind the back jumper good. Guess who? Janae Terry. The Boilermakers. Janae Terry doing a little bit of everything. I mean, we're breaking ankles up in Mackey Arena. Janae Terry doing a little bit of everything in the. There's Harper. And eight points in the first half. All in the paint. Give her that wow. and one for the Boilers because she's scoring on the interior at will. Off the dribble, stays patient, feels where the defense is, that patience. Illinois is really packing in the paint right now. We're inside the three-point line. Layton carries a triple. She was 0 for 6 in the first half. She puts herself in positions to score right there. Kendall Boston. The bounce. The Illini need to get her open looks from three. Terry, open look. Pays it off. Thorn in the side of the Illini in the third quarter, making everything work with her patience, poise, and distance. Alice a three. There is Stevenson with a left hand, counted in the foul does not stop working. Gets the rebound, regathers, balance, shoulder squared, and one. You have to finish with contact. Open three. Harper puts it in. Welcome back to the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Time for our Pro Boilers feature, where we look at how former Purdue student-athletes are doing in their professional sports careers. Pro Boilers is presented by Indiana Kitchen Premium Pork Products. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Both our Pro Boilers and Indiana Kitchen are boiler made. We'll uh, talk about our two players over in Spain, Ariana Harris, in a win on Saturday. Had 11 points, six rebounds, and two steals. Her team won 73-54. They improved to 4-12 and on the season. Aya Traore, playing for a different team in Spain, had 14 points, nine rebounds, and three assists. But her team lost 67-63, so they are now 5-9 and nine on the year. Talking with Mark Stevens, who is the newest member of the assistant coaching staff. You are the newest member, right? I, I don't remember the, the sequence of, of coaches coming in. I'm looking at Katie. I can't remember who. Uh, that, that, okay, they announced be, you before uh, Kelly, right? Okay. Gotcha. All right, so one of the newer members of the coaching staff. Um, talking about making the transition. So you go into the high school ranks. You also coach some AAU ball, and then you made the transition to college. Now you get into the recruiting game. And the one thing we heard about Mark Stevens over and over and over, this guy can recruit. What makes you a good recruiter? Uh, well, first, it's a team effort, you know, and, and, and you've got to work for people who you can sell. Um, and I think that's, you know, my when my decision to move here is because of Coach KG. Um, I can sell salt to a slug if it comes to, do you want to come play for her? Um, so I think that's the biggest thing. You know, I, I, I was fortunate. I actually met uh, a nice young lady that was in the, in the stands that, you know, that was from Big Known. I had a chance to coach with, uh, with Trisha Cullop. Um, and, and now coming here to coach for KG is just makes recruiting easy um, because when you have somebody who was the seventh pick in a WNBA draft mm -hmm. that lived the dream that a lot of these young girls want to live and now she gets a, you get a chance to learn from her every day, I mean, it's almost a no-brainer. Then you throw in 
you know, our community support and you throw in our facilities, you throw in obviously our world class education. And now it's, you know, now it's a puzzle that a lot of people just have pieces, but we could put a whole puzzle together for some of these young ladies. Uh, Katie and I talked in one of the previous segments about Christy Curry. I think it's worth bringing up Trisha Collip. You mentioned from Bicknell, Indiana, number 33 in your program, number one in your heart. Uh, and she she had a solid career. It wasn't a great player, it was a role player here. But, boy, she has really put things together at Toledo and really has sustained excellence over a long period of time there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she has, and I, and I think that's just the biggest thing um, is just doing things the right way. Um, and I think that's, you know, what, what I carry here and, and, and I love because the, the, the same mission as KG. We want to bring people into Purdue that loves Purdue first, that wants to put winning above everything else, and then obviously, you know, that want to be quality young ladies, you know, and, and obviously with the world-class education, we've got to make sure that we're building futures for them outside of basketball. You mentioned before you that your your middle son. I think you're you're uh, is, you're talking about which which sports he wants to play. Two sons and a daughter, right? So mm-hmm. you got three kids. Um, the things that we forget sometimes when coaches make moves is that means a lot of people have to make moves, physical mm-hmm. moves, and for kids growing up in school, it's it's sometimes difficult. How did you sell them on leaving Toledo and coming to West Lafayette? For my son, he first thing he did was looked at uh, the football schedule. Um, and he was like, oh, okay, we got Ohio State, we got Notre Dame, um, you know, I'm good. And then my daughter was an easy sell, too. My little one wasn't so happy because we had to pull all of his stickers off the wall. Um, <laughs> but, but other than that, um, I actually met my wife here in Indianapolis, so that was a pretty, uh, pretty easy sell for her, too. And how have they acclimated to life in West Lafayette, Indiana? Really good. You know, obviously the schools are a little bit smaller. I was actually just joking with Maddox, is our teacher that's here as well. Um, you know, to go from a school with two or 300 people and that is elementary, almost has 1,200 kids, is a little bit different. Yeah. Um, but other than that, it's been awesome. All right, we're talking with Mark Stevens. We're going to have more with him after this. It is the Katie Gerald Show, presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Both teams get the shots they want. Just couldn't get them to fall. Jumper there from Abby Ellis is good. And the pace between these two teams will be something to watch. That one goes inside for Caitlin Harper, the sixth year. Her competitiveness has always been there. And a competitor loves rebounding. She sure does. 801 career rebounds now. Five left on that shot clock, three on the way from Layden, no good. Put back up though, again, second chance points for Purdue. Rebounding the ball, and actually the guards for Purdue do such a great job rebounding. Ellis for three, that is good, Abby Ellis. She moves up to the top of the key and gives her post player a spot. Well, she's a five time. Inside to Harper, that one goes. We just saw a moment to go. Five seconds left in the shot clock right here for Purdue. Got to get something off. And there goes Purdue, breaking up that run for Nebraska. Offensive player. So Nebraska's in the bonus as Kroll misses those two free throws. And there's working away in the paint, turns around. What a move, but blocked. Heads the other way for Purdue in the hands of Abby Ellis. Well, in the first two minutes there, it was all about the offensive rebounds. And Huskers out-rebounding Purdue big here to start this quarter. Huge three from Sophie Swanson. Talk about another freshman. Yeah, she'll defend Rashonda Jones, who is working hard to try and get her team back in this. A great look there from Reynolds. She got yep, great play by Reynolds. She was able to split two defenders there and get the finish. Here's Jones with the elbow jumper. Everyone needs a little playing time, so before a Purdue basketball game or any time throughout the week, stop by walk-ons in the Purdue Memorial Union where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. Boilermakers and Hoosiers coming up on Sunday. We'll have the broadcast starting at 1.45, and then Purdue heads back to the road next Wednesday night against the Northwestern Wildcats. Uh, I'm already being roasted, by the way, on Facebook, so I know I'm going to get more than that when I go home. Talk about recruiting. Uh, let's talk about the master plan. We're not going to name, mention specific names, but when you're trying to put together the list of who you're going to look at from, let's say, the class of 24, 25, 26, what's the funnel like? How do you start? How do you? How wide is it to start, and how do you narrow it down? 
I think it starts with our education. Um, you know, the, the fact that Purdue is a global brand. Um, you know, we, we're actually I have a, a call set up for coach um, next Wednesday with a young lady from Germany. Um, so I think the when you talk about a casting of a net, you know, I think there's not a place that we can't recruit from. Um, obviously, we want to win our backyard, and I think that's the first thing that we, we we've been trying to do. And I think we've had. You know, rankings don't really matter to us, but if you look at a list, and I think every top five kid um, in the state of Indiana in the last, in the next four or five classes have all already been on campus. And I think that was our first mission. Um, and then it's just going out to get the best players in the country. Um, and I think that's, you know, building around, you know, the young cast that we have now with, with our freshman class and just want to continue to stack classes. Uh, we talk about stacking days, and that's what we want to do is continue to stack classes with quality individuals that buy into the brand that, you know, that want to play on both ends of the floor, and that's where we're going to start. You mentioned international players. Certainly you want to recruit in your backyard, but I think basketball, as we know, is a global sport these days. And so uh, we've got Abby Ellis all the way here from Australia, who's your leading scorer, and uh, it just shows that basketball, basketball is basketball, and it translates. It does, and I think you know it, it's round for most you know for most of the country what they play in. Sometimes it's brown with a light brown stripe on it, but um, for the most part, basketball is basketball, and I think that's the biggest thing too is just to continue to reach out and find you know those connections and whether it's you know an ABS on a transfer. You know, obviously we would love to build it with high school kids, but sometimes you do got to go in the portal and, and and plug and play in different holes in what you need at that specific time. Um, and then you know we always sit down and we always want to take care of our home first. We always want to take care of the kids on our roster. Um, but then we've always, we also, also got to look at them and say, how do we continue to get them better teammates? And how do we continue to move the needle forward that we want to get Purdue back to where it's supposed to be? All right, let's talk about this basketball team. I thought the uh, team showed a little bit of grit and courage last night after losing a lead late. And, you know, you lost seven in a row, and all of a sudden they come back and tie the game. It would have been easy to fold the tents. I thought that was a pretty impressive victory last night when it was all said and done. It was. And I, and I think that it's accredited to, you know, the storms that they've already been through. You know, we've, we've been through the same thing with Indiana, Indiana and Ohio State and even Minnesota and some of those games that we let slip away. Um, but, you know, when, when your head coach doesn't waver and she stays cool, calm, and collective, it kind of helps, you know, those players in those moments, especially you look at our non-conference and what we had to do there. Um, so and now it, it's almost preparing those kids, especially those young kids, because you see what some of our younger kids did in a game like last night. It's because they've been battle-tested. You know, back to recruiting for a second. I think most people in the country, if you follow either boys uh, high school basketball or girls high school basketball, it's pretty easy to identify the top 20, 25 players. I mean, everybody can do that. I, I, you know, if you've got a set of eyes, you can see who's really good. How do you find those gems or those people maybe beneath the top 25 that can really fit your system and can help you win? I think that's the biggest thing, too, is, is, is it's about better relationships. And, and you got to find kids that – that one is going to play your style of basketball, where, whether it's fast and, and you want long and athletic kids where you can do some different things with them. And, you know, whatever it is that you want as a basketball player, sometimes you got to put that on the back burner and try to find, you know, quality people. Um, because everybody says they want to be a great basketball player, but when they get to college, their roles may change or we may ask them to do some things they're not used to doing. So making sure we find those kids that are going to buy into what KG wants to do. Well, Mark, I know that Trisha Cullop hated to see you leave there, but we're awfully glad that we got you in West Lafayette. Uh, congratulations on what you've been able to land so far with this staff, and uh, we look forward to some great recruiting classes and great seasons in the coming years. Definitely. Thanks for having me. I'm enjoying being here. All right, we're going to have the head coach back with us, our final segment of the Katie Gerald Show presented by Purdue Fed Federal Credit Union on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. From Learfield. There's Kendall Boston dumping it down to Hobby. Two seconds and picked off by Purdue. Especially because Michigan defends at such a high level. Inside and there is Mary Ashley Stevenson with a broken nose and all. Stevenson, a deep two, rattles it home, and the freshman with an early four points for Purdue. Locking it down, then how about the freshman with the Batwoman mask, making it look. Stevenson with five. Oh, how about that touch with the left hand? Of the Boilers making things happen. Mary Ashley Stevenson. So calm, so poised. And here comes Terry, who was flirting with triple-double like numbers in the first half. Six points, five rebounds, seven assists. Very interesting to watch how quickly they've come together after graduating so much talent last season. 
Big feet inside oh. to Stevenson, and the freshman is in double figures with 12. Seven game skid, and they have had an epic performance by Janae Terry. 500 career. Ellis a three. There is Stevenson with a left hand, counted in the foul. Does not stop working. Gets the rebound, regathers, balanced, shoulder squared, and one. You have to finish with contact. Into Stevenson, already with a career high, and she gives Purdue back the lead. Here's Kendall Bostick dumping it down to Hobby. This week's game plan is presented by Purdue Federal Credit Union, home of the official credit union for Purdue fans. Learn more about their products and services at PurdueFed.com. Katie, you've seen the Hoosiers once. Uh, they were without Sydney Parrish the first time. We don't know what her status is going into the weekend, but the other four players have really stepped up in her absence. And the one thing we saw, man, they can shoot the basketball when they get hot. Yeah, they can shoot it. Um, you know, obviously, we did our job on Mackenzie Holmes. She uh, she was an All-American in the fourth quarter and, and made the plays. Uh, we missed a couple rotations um, in the half court, it w but it was really the, the open floor threes that, that Scalia and, and Garzone hit, uh, that if we can try to limit those, um, we'll give ourselves a chance. Um, it, it's pick your poison, yep. right? It's it's play one-on-one -on -one against Mackenzie Holmes and, and let her do her thing. Um, or, or see if they're they're hot from the outside. So uh, we'll we'll try to put a game plan together. Obviously, we don't play um, until Sunday. We'll we'll try to piece think something together um, to give ourselves the best chance to to try to figure out how to win a game. We have seen small crowds. We have seen big crowds. I would assume this will be a very big crowd and a vocal crowd down Sunday in Bloomington, uh, two o'clock on Super Bowl Sunday. And uh, you know, I think hopefully the the Boilermakers will be able to use that to their advantage and, and get a little excitement going out on the floor. It'd be nice, um, but I'll tell you what, Tim, I would give anything for I would give a Chiefs losing the Super Bowl to the 49ers for us to go down there and and win that game. Um, now that's something. Even if I would that's really I would something. give Buffalo Bills a chance <laughs> to win that game. <laughs> no, um, you know, obviously they had 17,000 people. I don't know if it's going to be a sellout this year or not, but uh, just what a really cool environment for, for our group. Uh, it's going to be loud, obviously, um, very pro-red. Uh, but, uh, it, you know, it, it's just us, and, and, and it, it's always going to be just us, and, and we got to figure out how to, how to get one on the road. Just a few seconds. We had Mark on for a few segments today. He has really been a big boon oh. to this coaching staff. Yeah. I mean, he's been terrific and, and has really given a shot of energy and, and my family got a chance to talk to him uh, in the game against Rutgers, and they were just very impressed about how personable he was to what for him was total strangers. Yeah, I, I, I just I can't say enough about who he is um, for me on the sideline, um, and and I, in, in the short amount of time that I've known him as a man, like in life, um, just forever grateful. I I texted his wife like, you guys aren't allowed to leave or move until I'm ready to retire. There so you go. Um, she said, deal, Mark. So you guys are stuck here. Well, and that's the, you know, we've seen the look at the stability of you look at our men's program. Matt right. Painter's been through a lot of highs and lows, but man, they got things cooking now. Yeah, we're, uh, we're gonna keep our head down and keep on grinding this out. Um, good, good days ahead. Um, hopefully for a, a good month of February. All right, congratulations on the win. I'm gonna say it out loud. Go Chiefs. Hey, go Chiefs. Just threw up a little in my Chiefs. mouth when I said that, but that's okay. <laughs> our engineer tonight, Wes Scott, our producer, Roger Forsyth, McCarty Cummings doing the video. Again, the Boilermakers taking on the Indiana Hoosiers on Sunday. We'll be on the air at 145 for that. We'll be back here next Monday night. For the head coach and for Mark Stevens, I'm Tim Newton. This has been the Katie Gerald Show on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield.